Hello everyone, my name is Emily Herring and I'm the naturalist out here at the Grimes Farm. We hope you enjoy this segment of Did You Know? Many times on these videos, I am the face that you see, but on this video, you will get to meet the other members of the staff of Marshall County Conservation. They're gonna tell you a little bit about information about our parks that a lot of people don't know. So we hope you enjoy Did You Know? by Marshall County Conservation staff. Hi, my name is Tyler Renzi, maintenance technician with Marshall County Conservation. Did you know that we partnered with Iowa State University to implement their prairie strips at Klomberg Prairie Preserve? Strips are short for science-based trials of row crops integrated with prairie strips. If you're not familiar with Klomberg Prairie Preserve, it is a 240-acre wildlife area located in the southern part of Marshall County, near Knapp Avenue and 330th Street. In 2014, we acquired Klomberg Prairie Preserve by the late Bernard Klomberg. He donated his property with the request that it be managed as a prairie preserve to protect the highly erodible soils. At the time of donation, 130 acres was row crop, 105 acres was pasture, and 5 acres contained at the farmstead and livestock buildings. In 2016, we restored 44 acres of pasture on the east side of Knapp Avenue to native prairie grasses and forbs. When deciding what to do with the rest of the cropland, we reached out to Iowa State University with the hopes that this site would be an ideal candidate to test out their strips program. In the spring of 2018, we partnered with Iowa State and with their guidance, we strategically planted 19 acres of native grasses and forbs on the east crop field, which is rented to a local farmer. The goal is to place reconstructed native prairie vegetation in the form of infield contour buffer strips and field edge buffer strips, which will reduce soil erosion, improve water quality, and provide habitat for native wildlife. Data collected on other similar strip sites result that if 10% of a row crop field is converted to diverse native perennial vegetation, sediment movement off the field can be reduced by up to 95%, nitrogen loss reduced by 85%, and phosphorus loss reduced by 90%. You may wonder how these prairie strips differ from conventional buffer strips. Conventional buffer strips typically are planted at fixed widths, while prairie strips will vary based on the amount of water they capture. The idea is to filter all of the water leaving the crop field. The more water that would flow down the slope, the wider the strip will be whereas less steep sloped areas with smaller amounts of water flowing will allow for narrower strips. Conventional buffer strips typically contain a monoculture of non-native cool season grasses, which tend to be weak stemmed and will lay flat in heavy rain events. Native tall prairie communities are typically dominant of stiff stem, deep rooted warm season grasses and forbs, which are less prone to collapsing under heavy rains. These plants offer more resistance to water flow and sediment movement. Also, a diverse community of native plants provides more support to pollinators and other wildlife. Not only do these strips benefit the highly erodible soils, they are home to many native species of wildlife, an uncommon species of bird, the upland sandpiper, as well as the smooth green snake, which is a species of special concern in the state of Iowa, have been observed at Klomberg. Many other game and non-game species are using these strips as winter cover and nesting habitat. Hunting is allowed at Klomberg Prairie Preserve, but please remember to be aware and respectful to everyone hunting or just out observing wildlife in this and all of our Marshall County areas. For more information on the STRIPS program, follow the link below. Hi everybody, Jeremiah Mankin, uh, Park Ranger Operations Supervisor here. Um, and did you know that Marshall County Conservation is not the DNR? So the DNR um, is the Department of Natural Resources and they are a statewide organization, whereas here in Marshall County Conservation, we are a county. Uh, county level organization. So we kind of do similar things, <clears throat> um, you know, kind of preserve, restore, protect um, natural areas in, in the state, in the county for us. But the DNR is a statewide organization, whereas we're the county. Um, we will have presence of the DNR in Marshall County. We have a little bit of uh, Hendrickson uh, Marsh right on the border of the county. So you might see the wildlife, uh, DNR wildlife guys working over there. Uh, we also have private lands biologists and district foresters, foresters for the state that might be in Marsh County helping landowners with different programs on their properties. Uh, we also have conservation officer from the DNR uh, um, in the county. So there is a DNR presence, but we are uh, separate entities and we kind of uh, state level, county level, we are different. So if you have any other questions, you know, you feel free to contact us and we can give you any more information you may need. Thanks. Hi again, my name is Emily Herring and I'm the naturalist with Marshall County Conservation. Did you know it's my job to educate people about the environment? On a normal day, you might find me in the schools teaching children about all different environmental topics, or maybe at community groups or in assisted living facilities. Sometimes I work with homeschool students as well. 
It all depends on who wants to learn about the environment, and I'm very open to teach them. We cover a broad range of topics, including birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, rocks, the weather, and taking care of our environment. If there's a topic you'd want to learn about, contact me and I would love to help. Another part of my job is public programming. Here at Marshall County Conservation, we offer a wide range of programs. You could learn about European colonization through Prairie Heritage Days or escape zombies on our zombie run when they lurk out here at the Grimes Farm during the Halloween season. We also offer art classes as we believe nature and art are connected. For younger children, we have story hour and during the summer months, we offer summer camps for ages four through sixth grade. Another popular thing that we do through Marshall County Conservation is offer outdoor recreation. We offer programming on kayaking, canoeing, snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, geocaching, and more. If you're not into the face-to-face -face programming, you can always check out our non-personal environmental education. Those include displays here at the Nature Center, as well as signage throughout our parks, and our story walk here at the Grimes Farm on the trail located below the Nature Center. If you want to learn more about these events, you can always check out our newsletter or our Facebook page. I love my job as a naturalist. The reason why is I get to share my passion about the environment with the people around me. This is important to instill respect for our environment, interest in what's going on around us, so hopefully those people will learn to love the environment and help take care of it with me. My name is Alan Naughton. I am the newest member of the Marshall County Conservation Board. I am a maintenance technician and I was hired August 19th of this year. I have a wife and three beautiful daughters. Uh, did you know Marshall County has 31 parks which are made up of 2,644 acres? Out of the 366,000 acres in Marshall County that is only 0.08% for recreational purposes. I am starting my digital tour at the Mormon Ridge log cabin. Uh, this log cabin was built in 1856 by William C. Ruddick with his wife Absolute and the 16 by 20 foot cabin was donated to the Marshall County Conservation Board in 1989. This log cabin is not furnished and it is always locked but it is open for tours and appointments can be made for recreational use. This cabin is located six miles northwest of Albion. Arnie Bend Wildlife Area is 203 acres of prairie wetland and forest area. This area is used for hunting, fishing in the river, uh, bird watching, wildlife observation, and mushrooming. This area is located northwest of Albion. Forest Reserve is 85 acres of woodland area located in the Iowa River Valley. Activities include hunting, fishing in the river, wildlife observation, uh, bird watching, mushrooming, and it also has river access for boats, kayaks, and canoes. Grammar Grove Wildlife Area, my favorite park. 121 acres of wildlife refuge of prairie, wetland, and forest area. It has a unique glacial erratic, which is an enormous granite boulder located in, on one of the many hiking trails. It's a great place for picnicking, horseback riding, and cross-country skiing. Uh, it also includes primitive camping and archery only hunting. It is located three miles southwest of Liscombe, close to Forest Reserve. Furrow area is a small area, six acres of wooded area, used for fishing and river access for boats, canoes, and kayaks, located just east of Marshalltown. Grimes Farm and Conservation Center, 160 acres of prairie, wetlands, and forest area. Located on Grimes Farm is a conservation center that provides support for environmental education, natural history exhibits, and a classroom used for meetings and activities. An amphitheater located just behind the center is used for outdoor concerts and weddings. A nature playscape is a great place that I like to take my kids to enjoy the outdoors and I also love to take them up to the observation tower that offers beautiful views of the, area, the surrounding areas. Other features include hiking, biking trails, picnic shelter, cross-country skiing, and a story walk. 
located west of Highland Acres Road between Highway 30 and Lincoln Way. Heart of Iowa Trail is 4.3 miles of hiking and horseback riding trails converted from the former Milwaukee Railroad. Located on this trail is a beautiful historical Hoy Bridge built in 1912 and stands 60 feet above the Clear Creek. Entrance is located in the town of Rhodes. Iowa River Wildlife Area is our largest area. It is 485 acres of forest, prairie, and wetlands. A uh, great place for hunting and wildlife observation and bird watching and mushrooming. Uh, this is located just north of Marshalltown off of Sand Road. Marietta Sand Prairie is 229 acres of prairie. It's a very unique area containing 56 acres of sand prairie remnant, one of the rarest prairie types and comp compromises only a few hundred acres of Iowa's 35 million acres. There is also small fens, which are rare spring-fed wetland with saturated soil. Activities include hunting, bird watching, uh, wildlife and flora observation located five miles northwest of Albion. Sand Lake is 95, has 95 acres of recreation area, 47 acres of lake, and is an important stopover for geese and waterfowl species. Fish species included are bass, bluegill, crappie, walleye, and northern pike. River species include white bass, yellow bass, greenfish, sunfish, carp, bigmouth buffalo. Some of the features include fishing jetties, boat ramp, canoeing, rowboat, kayaks, and electric power boats only. Located just east of Marshalltown. Stanley Mill Mitigation Site. This is an Iowa DOT project developed specifically to offset vegetation losses associated with highway construction and improvement work. This is 315 acres of floodland and thousands of trees have been planted in native wetland vegetation. It's uh, used for hunting, bird watching, wildlife observation, nature study, and photography. It is located just west of Albion. Timmins Grove Park, 205 acres of forested recreational land. The Iowa River separates Timmins Grove into two segments, north and south. The south side has hiking trails, fishing in the river, archery hunting only, wildlife observation, uh, boat access to the Iowa River, a shelter house, camping with electrical and primitive restroom facilities. The north side has hunting, wildlife observation, and hiking trails. Located seven miles northwest of Marshalltown and a mile and three quarters southwest of Albion. That is all of our digital tour. Thank you for joining us. I hope you get out and enjoy some of our natural resources. Hi, my name is Tammy Crow. I am the administrative assistant with Marshall County Conservation. In this May coming up, it'll be nine years for me with County Conservation. Today, I am at one of my favorite parks, which is Three Bridges Park, which is east of Marshalltown and west of LaGrande and just a little bit north of the big town of Cory, Iowa. Uh, one of the reasons I like this park is because it brings back a lot of memories from my childhood. When I was a child, my uncle does not live too far from here, so we would ride our snowmobiles down here all the time uh, when there was good snow. I also have an aunt and uncle that were married in here. I want to say 75, 76. I couldn't quite confirm that on, on my aunt's Facebook page, but um, that was married in this park. So it does have a lot of history with my family. Uh, one of the cool features of this park is, is one is the limestone that's along the ledges of the limestone that's really, really pretty. The access to the river, we have a boat ramp that was put in in 1976 here. Um, another feature out here is this historical Whipple Trussle Truss Bridge. This was put on the registry in 1998, um, the historical registry. It was originally built in 1885 for a little $3,295. Um, and they put it on the historical registry because it's one of the unique bridge structures of this Whipple Truss feature that it has. It's been closed to traffic since probably, I think, the mid-90s. Um, before that, you used to be able to go this way, but um, they deemed it not safe for vehicle traffic anymore. It is safe to walk on. Um, I have also tried to figure out why this area is called Three Bridges. Um, 
at some point, my understanding is from talking to Gary Brandenburg, who used to be the Marshall County Conservation Director, is there used to be three bridges that led into this park from the north side. So someday I'll get that all confirmed with maps and stuff because it's one of those things that just perplex me. Um, also, did you know in this park that they used to um, mill limestone out of this park um, because of its access to the river, it was easy for barges to come up, hook up to um, the side of the river, hook on and, and load up with the limestone. The limestone that came from Three Bridges um, adorns the Marshall County Co Courthouse, the Episcopal Church, um, First United Methodist Church, and then the old library that's on the corner of um, Center and State Street. Um, also with this, we're at this site with the, the, where the old mill is, if you walk to the north side um, and just by the bridge, you look down, you can see the old remnants of where the mill used to be. You can also, if you go past the boulder that recognizes where the mill was at, uh, right off our parking lot here, there, if you go straight down, you can see the archways of uh, what used to be part of the mill, which is really neat to see. Uh, like I said, there is boat access here. I know a lot of people that like to come down here and fish because it's kind of out of the way. Um, and it's, it's good fishing. We also do have here a suspension bridge um, that was built in 1976 by the Youth Conservation Corps, which was a great group of kids that were high school age that would get together and work on conservation projects um, throughout the county. Unfortunately, that program has went away in Marshall County. I think there's a few counties that still do it. Um, but that bridge was built. Um, unfortunately, during the derecho, it did, it did um, have some damage to it. We will work on getting that repaired. Um, if you take the path up, it'll take you right to that suspension bridge, which is a really neat thing to see. Three Bridges is a great park to come out here and hike and do some uh, a lot of sightseeing. You, I have heard you can find mushrooms out here. I've tried to find them myself. Not so successful at that, but lots of cool areas to see. Like I said, it's our first county park and um, it's about 13 acres of land. So. Hello everybody, I'm Jeremiah Mankin, uh, park ranger, operations supervisor here at Marsh County Conservation. Did you know that we have uh, our nesting box program here at Marshall County? Have you been in any of our parks or wildlife areas and noticed, say, a uh, box on a pole or on a sign and kind of wondered what lived in those boxes? So today I'm going to cover about some of that stuff uh, that nests in those cavities. So what we do is we provide structures for cavity nesters to nest in. So whether that is bluebirds, wood ducks, or kestrels, and numerous other wildlife also use them uh, throughout the year. Um, but first things you might notice if you're in so a lot of our, our parks are uh, bluebird houses. And there's different styles of them out there. Um, this is kind of the most recent one we do. Um, and in here you will have wrens use them, bluebirds will use them. Um, there's a few other birds that will also use them, but we try to make them so starlings don't get them. But if you see those around, uh, that's what they are for. Um, then the next one we kind of go is we actually run um, kestrel boxes. And so a lot of these we have on the back side of road signs. So if you're out on a gravel road going to one of our wildlife areas, parks, uh, up by Grammar Grove, there's one right there on the back of a sign. So we put these up for the kestrels or a cavity nester. Um, they don't have enough cavities to nest in. So we put up the boxes for them. Now, now right now in Marshall County we have just over 100 kestrel boxes up on our gravel roads. And our success rate on kestrels using them are anywhere around 60, 50, 60 percent, which is really good. I think most of the time they say if you have 30 to 40 percent nesting, successful nest in your boxes, that's a successful program. So you'll see these up on gravel roads. Uh, kestrels like open areas with, you know, like grasslands to hunt in, uh, water close by. Um, and also little screech owls will use them in here, uh, fly catchers, we find nests in them, we clean them every, every winter we go in and clean them, uh, kind of keep tabs of what is using them. So we kind of have an idea of success of kestrels and success of other wildlife that use these boxes. And then the next one we have are wood duck boxes. You can see here, close up, and kind of here behind me you can see them. But, so we have wood ducks, we provide these uh, nesting cavities for, you know, wood ducks to use. And also hooded mergansers will use them um, as well, but we kind of just count them, you know, as a successful nest. And inside of them, um, we prov provide wood chips for them to nest in. And these also get cleaned every winter. We go and clean all these. So we have just over 200 
wood duck boxes out on our parks, wildlife area, like here at Greencastle on our silt pond, you know, we provide boxes for the wood ducks. Uh, there's lack of cavities out there in nature uh, for them to use, so we provide these. And we also run in, you know, 60% success rate on these structures as well. So, and if you've ever wondered what it looks like in um, a nesting box when they are being used, we actually have cameras in a few boxes here at Greencastle that we're able to show kind of what goes on inside of them. And, you know, early in the spring, you'll have the hen comes in, you know, she'll check them out. Uh, we have video of two hens fighting over nest boxes um, in the areas, and we've added more and kind of to help supplement that so there's not as much fighting going on. Um, and then in the box, you know, she comes in and she lays an egg, egg a day. So every morning she'll come in, she will lay an egg, and then she'll cover it up. Um, she'll, you know, pluck down off of her to, uh, for that nest. So you'll see that in that nest as well. And she will lay anywhere, you know, nine to, you know, 16 eggs. Uh, I think last year we had 13, 13, and 12 success in the boxes I had cameras in. So into the nest, and then uh, once, the, once the, the chicks hatch, the ducklings hatch, they will um, stay in the, in the box for roughly 24 hours. So if they hatch late in the day, they probably won't hatch or jump out of the box the next day. They'll wait till the next morning. So usually it's 24 hours to 36 hours there in the box after they hatch. So then once they hatch, you know, the mom will still, she's got to go out and feed. So usually she cuts that down to once a day when the, after the, they have started hatching. Before that, she usually leaves once in the morning and once in the late afternoon, she will leave to go out and feed. Uh, they're usually gone about an hour and then they come back. But once they hatch um, in the box, she will leave in the morning, go out and scout or in the afternoon, depending on when they hatch. So that she'll go out and leave. And once she leaves that box, the, the babies in that box kind of know that they have to kind of huddle down, stay quiet. Um, so as soon as she leaves, um, it's pretty fun watching it. Like it just instantly they're quiet and they just lay there and they wait for her to come back. Kind of a thing to you know watch out and make sure predators don't find them while, while the mom's away. Um, and also before they, the next morning when she's getting ready to take her, her babies out of the box when they're ready to fledge, she will multiple times, she will go up and sit and look out the box. Like she'll be looking out the hole. She might kind of jump up and be totally outside the hole, kind of looking, and she might jump back in if she saw something she didn't like. And eventually when she's comfortable enough with um, the surroundings and know there's not predators around, she will, uh, she'll fly out of the box and she'll go out on the ground and, and then one by one, um, the baby slowly just jump out of the box. And then as soon as she knows they're all out, uh, then they'll slither down to, you know, she keeps really tight to the ground and kind of goes to the closest water source there is. So at Greencastle, they go down to the lake or one of the silt ponds, um, and then that's where they stay. So it's kind of, kind of have some videos here to show you of that. Um, and they're pretty fun to watch.
Okay, so if you'd like more information on providing your own nesting structures in your backyard, in your pond at home, um, feel free to watch our newsletter. We will have upcoming events this winter for building um, nesting structures uh, for you to take home and then you know, build them yourself and put up in your backyard so you can watch uh, the wildlife in your backyard. Did you know that Marshall County Conservation has a Friends group? To tell you more about this is Carrie Barr, the president of the Friends. Hi, I am Carrie Barr. I'm president of the Friends of Marshall County Conservation. Our mission is to help the people in the staff at the Marshall County Conservation Board and all the work that they do. It has been a complete joy to be a part of this because everyone loves the parks, especially in this last year when we have really needed a chance to get outside in a safe way. So people have been using our parks so much and we're so happy to um, make them available and to make them even nicer. In fact, if you look at this nature playscape and the new musical instruments, they are compliments of the Friends of Marshall County Conservation. Uh, our, in the way that we support the Conservation Board is through volunteer work and through raising money to support different projects. Um, and so this was one of them. Another thing that we've done that you may be familiar with are the concerts that we've had. This last summer, obviously, we weren't able to due to COVID, but next summer, take a look. We try to have concerts about once a month on Thursday nights around 5.30, so you can leave work or gather up the kids and come on out. There's usually a food truck or two. Have a bite to eat and watch a concert with the prairie grass in the background and watch the sun go down. It's a really uh, lovely way to spend an evening and it's a fun way to get out with friends and family. So call out to the Conservation Center or give me a call if you'd like to be a member of the Marshall or the Friends of Marshall County Conservation. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed learning more about Marshall County Conservation. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us either via Facebook or email or phone and we'd love to answer your questions. If you'd like to learn more about Marshall County Conservation, I suggest you check out the Facebook page or the website. I hope you enjoy this beautiful fall weather and that our paths cross soon.